hello everyone and welcome back to another video in this video I'm going to show you on how you can make a Wi-Fi telemetry and connect it with your uh, configure it with your uh, Pixel flight controller so telemetry is an important part uh, in order to conduct uh, flights in the autonomous mode or in the guided mode again uh, once you want to uh, configure any kind of changes if you want to calibrate your flight controller if you want to upload any configurations to your flight controller then what you have to do is you have to connect your flight controller with your computer using a USB cable sometimes for the calibration of compass and other stuff it becomes slightly difficult to calibrate it with using the wires or even it's not possible for having the live telemetry you know during the flight by any kind of wired uh, ways so in that case what is uh, important is to have a wireless telemetry so now to serve that purpose there are many commercially available wireless uh, telemetry kits but those are very expensive so i've come up with a cheaper solution and i've been able to make um, a telemetry kit you know using uh, the node mcu esp8266 which is very cheap it uh, cost around uh, around uh, less than a dollar i should say uh, no less than four dollars should be around something around three dollars the esp8266 also known as the node mcu so in today's video, I'm going to show you on how you can make um, a telemetry uh, for the Pixel drone using uh, the Node MCU. So there are a number of things that you have to do uh, uh, before proceeding uh, proceeding to uh, to this, I should say. So the first thing you have to do here is you ha you need to download uh, a firmware that will be flashing the Node MCU or the ESP8266. So you have to go to this website. I'll be pasting the link in the description box. From there, you have to select this firmware, ES firmware ESP12e.bin file that will be uh, responsible uh, for the um, uh, for flashing your Node MCU uh, uh, with this firmware. And then you need a flasher or uh, a tool that will be uh, uploading the firmware to the Node MCU. And the tool, you can download it uh, from this hyperlink for your 64-bit or 32-bit system. So you click on this hyperlink and it will start downloading the flasher. After you have downloaded the flasher, you have to install the firmware to your Node MCU or the ESP8266. So here is my uh, here here are the two downloaded files. This one is the uh, firmware that will be flashed to the Node MCU, and this one is the flasher. After that, you have to connect your ESP8266 or the Node MCU with your computer, with your laptop using a micro USB cable or a Type C cable, depending on your uh, uh, depending on the port of your Node MCU. So I'm not going to connect it right now because I've already done, I've already gone through the process for one time I'm, and I've already uploaded the firmware to the Node MCU. So I'm, I will get you through the process but I will not do it uh, step by step. Rather, I, I, I'll show you the steps. So after connecting it with your computer, you have to open the flasher tool, which is the ESP8266 flasher. From here, you have to select the port where the Node MCU is connected maybe COM4, maybe COM5, maybe COM8, maybe COM10. I don't know what that will be. Depends on the port of your computer. Depends on the device, uh, in other words. So from here, you select the you select the COM port, and the AP MAC address and STA MAC address will be fetched automatically after selecting the COM port. After that, you have to go to this option, configuration, and you have to select the firmware file from here so you click here and you select the firmware file which is firmware esp12e.bin that we have recently downloaded after this you have to go to advance and you have to check if the flash size is 4 megabyte and once you are done with all these you are ready to flash the device you click on flash and it will take around two to three minutes in order to flash the node mcu so once you are done with flashing you have to go uh, to mission planner and do a number of uh, configuration. So you go to the configuration option. From here, you have to search for serial one bot. You have to uh, set the serial one bot, serial one bot. As you can see, the default value is uh, something like five seven, um, five seven something, fifty seven thousand something. But you have to set it to uh, nine two one which is eventually 90, 921 600. So we have to change the serial one baud rate, which will be nine, uh, 921,600. 
after this after doing so you have to write the parameters from here write params you have to click here write params while doing this thing while configuring this thing as we have not uh, configured the telemetry yet so for the first time while installing the firmware you have to connect the flight controller with your computer using the USB cable only then the right params option will be visible so after doing this you are all ready uh, for uh, uh, for checking uh, your for checking your uh, telemetry but before that I would like to go through the wiring process so not all the pins you will be requiring for the telemetry so I'm using the telemetry one the telemetry one uh, comes with the DF13 connectors so you have to get a six pin DF13 connectors because the port designated as telemetry one comes with six pins so you need a six pin DF13 connector you have to cut the DF13 connector in the middle and you have to uh, get the insulating wires out for the four wires from left you have to get the three wires uh, you have to get off the three in, uh, uh, insulation of the three wires the first three wires from the left then the later two wires won't come to any use and then you have to get off the insulation of the last wire so we will be needing the first three pins and the last pin be very careful while stripping off the insula uh, insu insulation of the wires after that I would like to show you the connection diagram that you have to follow so the first pin of the telemetry one port the first pin of the telemetry one port will be connected to VCC or of the node MCU or the ESP8266 here is the VCC which is V in the second port as you can see the second pin will be connected to the receiver the second pin corresponds to the transmitter of the telemetry one port and you have to cross it with the node MCU e or ESP8266. So the second pin, which is the transmitter of the telemetry one, has to be crossed with the receiver of the node MCU. So the second pin from the left, the second pin has be to be connected with the receiver pin, as you can see, this pin. The third pin should be connected with the transmitter of the node MCU, which is, in other words, the receiver of the of the of the telemetry uh, telemetry one port the third pin of the telemetry one uh, port you should you should connect it with the transmitter so that's how uh, the transmitter and the receiver of the node MCU and the uh, and the flight controller are crossed so that's how they would be able to exchange information the flight controller will be transferring information to the node MCU that will be receiving it and the uh, node MCU will be transferring information I mean transmitting information to the flight controller that will be uh, receiving it so we are done with three pins. Now let's come to the last pin. So once you are done with the first three pins, you have to leave the next two pins. These won't come to any work. The last pin has to be connected with the ground pin of the node MCU. Now, the pin type of the DF13 connector and the legs of my node MCU are not the same. I mean the separation of the pitch uh, are, are not the same. Maybe one comes with the 2.54 mm pitch and the other maybe comes with uh, something lower pitch. I can't exactly remember the pitch. So in that case, what you need to do is you need to take the jumper wires, you know, for the uh, the male type, uh, the female type jumper wires to connect with the four pins of the node MCU. You have to get the insulation off and connect it with the corresponding pins of the DF13 connector which is eventually connected to the telemetry one port of the flight controller. Make sure that you are using the heat shrink in order to avoid any kind of unexpected shorts. After this you are all done with the wiring and you are all ready to, to and your telemetry has been set and you are all ready to check out your telemetry. So after that what you have to do, you go to plan, you come here and for the connection type you have to choose UDP uh, over here well another th another thing I might have missed the ESP8266 now will act as a uh, Wi-Fi host like Ardu pilot I've already uh, I'm already connected to this uh, network so the network that is generated by the ESP8266 after flashing it by default it is Ardu pilot and the password is Ardu pilot all will be in small letters and you can check this uh, information by clicking on this link by uh, clicking on this internet protocol address. So from the get status, you can check the number of packets which are being uh, exchanged. From the setup, you can ch change 
this SS ID of the Node MCU, and you can also change the password of the Node MCU. After that, if you want, you can change it, and then you click on Save, and then you have to connect you your computer with that Wi-Fi generated by the Node MCU. For me, it's Ardu Pilot. The password is Ardu Pilot, as I've already shown you. From here, you see this is the password. Once you are connected with this network, you can connect Mission Planner with the flight controller through this Node MCU without using any kind of wires. So as you can see, right now the Mission Planner is not connected to any, uh, not connected to the flight controller by any kind of wired means or through the COM ports. So you have to connect to the Ardu Pilot Wi-Fi, which I'm already connected to, and then you hit on Connect. Now, uh, yes, the port is 14550, and it should be connected to my flight controller very shortly. Yes, it's getting the parameters, and I'm all set. I have been connected to the flight controller. If you check the data, then you can see all this information over here. Like, uh, you see the yaw over here, you know, it's 90.1 degree. So let me remove the uh, move the position of my drone. You see the yaw is changing. Let me reset the position. You see the yaw is changing. So the telemetry is working perfectly. So I believe it will come to your work and it will play a significant role in my case uh, in order to perform the autonomous flight, in order to perform the flights in the guided mode, in order to accomplish any kind of missions and the expense is very low. The, um, the DF-13 connector cost uh, me around uh, one dollar and the one US dollar I should say and the node MCU or the ESP8266 may be three dollars so four dollars you are all done with the telemetry you can also connect the Bluetooth telemetry uh, with your uh, with your flight controller maybe I'll show that in one of the later videos so I uh, hope you're I hope that I've been able to clear about uh, how to install uh, Wi-Fi telemetry using the node MCU or the ESP8266 which is a very cheap solution so that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye for now.